Good morning, folks. Looking at the southeastern limb in 211 angstroms, little filament hanging on for dear life as he spins in to face Earth. He's too tiny to be a major concern. Today we're going to be seeing a continued surge in sunspots, continued dominance of the Earth-facing quiet, lithospheric events, and a news article that should light the ball between the ears of many of you. Let's begin. We're at spaceweathernews.com, and the sun appears calm at first, but then flashing and jumpiness in minor rejecta can be seen as bright areas begin to grow as well. What you're really seeing there is a birth and expansion of sunspot groups. Compared to two days ago, we're now swimming in sunspots. Two solid groups departing, with what appears to be three on the left still coming in. When we come down to analyze those spots, we find the southern grouping of the incoming three is the most dangerous as red negative has split blue positive umbras. We do have some mixing over on the right as well, but that's less geo-effective by the second. I'd be more interested in what's still coming in behind the limb than what's about to depart Earth's view. Now, despite the sunspot surge, the Earth-facing solar quiet effect remains dominant but will be tested today. Solar wind speed in yellow continues to rise, but thus far only into intermediate levels and Earth's magnetic shield is doing just fine recovering from that storm event one day ago. Not much in terms of earthquake factors right now. That central coronal hole is about it, but the sun itself is calm and the planetary geometry is not significant. Nevertheless, we've got a volcano in the Nicobar Islands that is clearing his throat. Technically an Indian island, but would be a concern from Thailand to Vietnam if it goes. We're also seeing a continuation of the uptick that 6.2 kicked off a couple days ago here in New Zealand. One hopes it is not foreshock activity, but the OLR anomalies are stronger here and in Indonesia than anywhere else right now. So, eyes on it. Couple articles today, including one on intermediately deep quakes. This tells of how dehydration can be yet another factor in deciding when the shaking will occur. A story of brittle ground. We also have another in our ongoing expose of electromagnetic effects on humans. Fields, currents, electricity, magnetism, everything from our technology to lightning to space weather is interacting with our planet and all of us on it. Website members, if you are new there and looking for an introduction to the topic of humans and electromagnetism, click premium over on the left after you've logged into your account and scroll down to our regular programs and pass them to humans and electromagnetism, humans and EM. It's a solid introduction and on this Saturday's Fly on the Wall we will be discussing this article a bit more and when we do we will also discuss hypersensitivity to vibration. We've got your pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's sunrise in the eastern United States on February 4th and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe everyone.